welcome to season four, episode 27 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley. A bit late on set, but hello, Susan. You love the camper van? I drew that. I was thinking about making t-shirts with something like that so you guys could wear them. Let me get on the feed and then we'll really begin. No lipstick today. <laughs> so have any of you ever crazy quilted before? If you have, you know that you start with a piece of fabric and then you build on top of it, adding to the thickness of the overall project. Now this was done without a solid piece of fabric beneath it and is stronger than if it had that and softer and more fluffy because it doesn't. Hello, Helen. Second one is a fancy one. Yeah, let me give you a good top shot of the pillow so you guys can see. Whoops. Well, that's the wrong camera. Oh my goodness, that camera's not on. Why aren't you on? Well, how embarrassing. Let's do this one. While I get the other camera going, I thought I did that already. And I used metallic thread on this which I thought I'd do again, because I know a lot of times people think it's really hard to sew with metallic, and it can be. Have you ever sewn with metallic thread and had a really hard time? Whoop, I got in the way of that, didn't I? got some pretty threads here to work with today that are all Christmassy. Well, we've got a lot more people on the feed today because they made it so I can record on uh, Instagram. So I uh, welcome all of you from Instagram. Welcome to my channel. This is a great project if you have jelly rolls because having all of the same width strips helps a lot. And generally you piece your fabrics together, right? If you have always pieced your fabrics together then done crazy quilting, give me a thumbs up. I'll try to keep up with the chat but it's moving pretty quick. And there will be all the links provided in the description below the video on my YouTube channel, inside Facebook, and on Instagram, everywhere you're watching this from, I'll be providing the links for you. But you can also visit creativefeet.com for more information. You made some pot holders. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to take the Rubber Husband rubber and I'm going to ink, ink it or paint it with fabric paint. And I'm going to make a new bowl cozy probably a recorded video, so you can expect that in the next couple days. Perhaps you can make a, another bowl cozy for someone with a, no way can the bowl slip out of the bowl cozy as you're carrying it around. I got some message on top of something. There we go. So let's see. I'm going to type my website in it. This is one of our add a quarter rulers for fabric, so, what's it called? <laughs> Paper piecing. I also, that's my, my top video on my YouTube channel is how I show how to do paper piecing without, without paper being in inside of the sewing. So if you're interested in 
in that. You can search my playlist for paper piecing. There we go. Are you guys having fun? I hope that you'll join my school as well. I'm posting these links inside the chat right now. The Learn is my free online school. Uh-oh. Something went wrong. I don't know what went wrong. Maybe I'm posting to the wrong. I don't know. Doesn't look like anything went wrong. I guess it wouldn't let me post my website. I'll do that again. So if you're watching for the first time on Instagram, will you type Insta so I know how many of you are on Instagram? Some of you are on X, also known as Twitter. So you can do an X and then I can get to know you. And if you want me to be able to see who you are inside of my chat, then inside of the app that you're watching on, you give Restream permission to see your profile and then I'll know who you are and we can get to know each other better. We also have a coupon running today. Coupon code is stocking because it's all uppercase. Last week's, or I just released this video a couple days ago on how to monogram on these furry stockings. And shout out to Amy and Wendy from the VIP group in Create with Claire Rowley as I did use their names on these stockings. Something's under there that shouldn't be. All right, we'll get going now. One of the things that I use for piecing with trim, which is in basic, basically we're embellishing and sewing at one time. And if you've ever done crazy quilting before, and had your fabric stretch, you may have experienced that the trim itself came, came apart or separated from the actual fabric. Has that ever happened to you? And isn't it disappointing? Go through all that work, you got the batting in there, and then it just breaks. Why does it break? It breaks because when you take fabric and you stretch it, it has a bias in the fabric. When you stretch it across the grain, it, it stretches and the stitches and the trim that's been stitched down that doesn't have any stretch to it. Well, the fact that this doesn't stretch and this stretches makes the thread break and then everything falls apart. So if you've had that happen to you before, give me a whatever kind of message you want. And, uh, Right before I went live, I knocked over everything. This was all neat and tidy. Each trim was in its own little pile, so hopefully this will unravel easy. Ugh. This is when you wish you had someone around that could untangle your tangles. All right, we have that. We have red and green. Of course, you can substitute this for any fabric. You don't even have to make it a holiday pillow. You can use anything that you like, any jelly roll that you like. These are the pearls that I intend to put on the pillow's edges around the piping as the pearls and piping foot for the creative feet also allow you to sew on the actual edge of the pillow after the pillow is constructed. So if you have any pillows that are just a little bit drab, you can add pearls to the edge of any pillow. It's something that people do to make extra money. They buy blank pillows and then they add pearls to the edge and sell them again for a lot more money. And it only takes a few seconds to go all the way around. 
I'm wearing boots, so. Because it's chilly here. I don't intend to finish the pillow today. However, I'll probably finish the pillow on a recorded video and follow up before next week. I do generally construct my pillows with two pieces for the back and overlap them. And when you do that, then you can actually take your pillow out and if you do it with a big enough overlap, there's no need for Velcro to keep it closed. And then you can switch it out and make a Thanksgiving, make a Valentine's and have the same pillow form inside so you don't have to store big giant pillows everywhere, just the tops. Kind of like a quilt, but it's a pillow. Here's a pillow that I did using a panel. If you're not sure what to use these decorative panels for, you can center them on top of a pillow and embellish as I did with this using the pearls and piping foot. I went around first with the satin edge foot and did a satin stitch as I did around this, even though this was not an applique, this was just a panel, going around the design made it look as if it was an applique so much easier and so much faster than if you try to do that with an applique pattern. I also really enjoyed using the fur as a piping instead of using piping, it made it more festive. What do you think? You like that? I love this. It's so old though. The fur has... Are you guys still there? I need to know you're still there because the chat seems to be having trouble today. I don't know. Will what be sticky enough? I can't remember what I said that made you ask that. Where do you get your pearls from? Oh, to be honest with you, I went to New York City and shopped in uh, the garment district. And obviously that's not possible for everybody. Whoever wins the giveaway today will be getting some trims. And if you, you'll get to choose whether you get holiday colors or jewel tones in your gift package. The bowl cozy I'll, I'll be doing on another day. It isn't rub. It isn't as rubbery as you think. It's it's got porousness to it, so I believe it will absorb any kind of dye. And that is going to be tested before I. I actually, hi Linda. Thank you guys for interacting. So I know that everything's good. This is something that you need to do when you work with fabrics that have a loose weave to make sure that they don't fall apart and this is a metallic so metallic threads are even easier to break i back it with a fusible interfacing first and then cut it out so that the edges are still clean and then it locks the bias in that fabric preventing the little fine metallic threads from ever breaking once somebody sits against your pillow you could reinforce each, but you don't need to on your cotton fabrics. Cutting your fabrics so that you are with the grain, of course, when you have a pattern like a stripe, you may not have the option of cutting with the grain if you want to have your stripes running the length of the piece. I'll pop in and talk about the bowl cozy. I'll, I'll test today the inking of the bulk of the rubber shelf liner and let you know today so you I know a lot of you are making Christmas gifts and so I know that you don't want to put it off until 2024 stripes can be very difficult but not with the liquid based glue the first thing you need is a center square, which I had. And I don't know what happened to it. So I need to pick. May as well do the same or use the same fabric. I'm trying not to say the word do anymore. 
all of a sudden I started saying that. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of follow along with this, but I don't have any of this Christmas fabric. Not sure what happened to it. So you just simply start and you don't have to have it cut in a square. If all of your pieces are the same width, it's a lot easier to do this method. What do you think? This one in the middle or this one in the middle? It really doesn't matter. Now, normally you would be piecing by putting right sides together. But in this case, what we're going to do is overlap the fabric like that. and use the liquid base glue. It's more likely that this fabric will fray than that fabric will fray, but these are too close to each other. I want to have contrast. May as well make them look similar. I don't know where Amy is today, but if anything goes awry, I have my phone set on vibrate so I will know if you guys try to reach me. Doing Placing little drops of the water-soluble stabilizer that is in liquid form onto the fabric and then slide your finger across and then place your fabric and I would exceed about a quarter inch so that you can trim it in case, in case you don't pin it or glue it straight and that is something that you'd want to do. Try to be straight How to know if you're straight is to look at this edge right here. And you have this fabric being right along the ruler and you can see this is a little bit staggered. So that means I have it crooked or this wasn't cut straight. So you can just lift it up and give yourself And you want to overlap about a quarter inch. This will be easier for you to see. So that's that. And we can take it right to the sewing machine. Choose what ribbon I want to use. And I'm going to use the green because I want to keep everything being contrast. And I really like this thread. I'm going to give this a go. This is a Robeson Anton thread. And it's antique gold. Looks like color number 1007. It has a really classic look to it. This is this is feels more like a rayon than it does a metallic, but there is metallic in there. I'm going to cut this. Where are you coming from? I think we got a rogue thread in there. Ugh, don't you hate that when that happens? Better find out now than to find out when you're sewing. Have you ever had your thread just stop? Just end in the middle of stitching? I also recommend that you have some practice fabric nearby to test before you go to the ribbon before you start sewing on this so that you don't end up with your stitching being off the ribbon on your actual project. Now I've got a lot of experience at this so I don't need to worry about it as much as you guys will. Oh my sewing machine isn't on. Raising my presser foot. Come on. All right. Are you guys ready for Christmas? Or are you still making presents? I'm still making presents. But I'm really excited about it. And I have this idea. I have several ideas. Can't tell you all of them because then we'll lose track of what we're doing here. 
and I like to surprise you. I woke up this morning and didn't even know what I was going to do, but I've had this project ready and cut because I was going to go on one of the television shows with this and uh, found it when it knocked over on the floor. I think this, I think the angels gave me a message. This is what you should do today. Now I'm taking the thread and placing it on my thread dispenser and I'm going to go around one of the posts on the top to give it just a little bit more of a drag. There, get that ribbon somewhere I can keep it. And then after that you go through the machine. I'm using a 9014 needle because it's better for the size of the thread. And we're going to be going into ribbon as well. That's very dense. The foot I'm using is the sequins and ribbon foot for ribbon and the pearls and piping foot for the beads. It's better to lean against ribbon than it is to lean against hard pearls. So on the main body of the pillow, just going to be using soft, flexible ribbons. And you can use upholstery braids as well. You can also stitch with a double needle and sew both sides of the ribbon down at once. However, this is an opportunity to use decorative stitches on your sewing machine and that's a lot of fun. This year I used just brown paper, bought a reel of wire, edged ribbon, the round, I make a fancy bow. You can make your own wire edge ribbon using the satin edge foot. Okay, I got all kinds of stuff in front of me. This is the foot that I had on for the last apple. Oh, I actually sewed something after the last show. And the pearls and piping foot is fantastic for the final step of bowl cozies and sewing fur. Taking the foot off the machine, I am going to replace it with the sequins and ribbon. The sequins and ribbon foot comes with a quarter inch opening, like you see here. And this is a seven millimeter wide bar. You can use other feet, should you have one. This is the one that I invented back when I was 22 years old. Come on, camera, there we go. I also have different size guides available for it. A lot of times people buy the foot get all excited and just buy the foot and then they neglect to see the accessory guides which can be switched out like you see here. So you'll get the sequin ribbon foot by, but by itself comes with a quarter inch guide and then these other two are sold separately. This ribbon that I'm using is the Pico Edge ribbon which a lot of people find very difficult because it doesn't have a straight edge. So to use this, we're just going to slide the ribbon in. And you do want to have right side facing up. It will, it'll kind of curl down to the wrong side. You can also pay attention to which side it's coming off the roll because on the roll, the pretty side is on the outside. So keeping it on the roll might help you as well. Now with no additional stabilizing, we're going to go ahead and place this beneath the foot, but not until the ribbon is inserted into the guide. Oops. It's also easier to insert the ribbon if you cut at an angle on the end. Were you trying to see that pillow before and you couldn't see it, Helen? There we go. And I have a red ribbon or a red bobbin thread in here. 
which is great for this because a lot of the fabrics are red. As I mentioned before, it's going to be best for you to use a sample fabric to test first. Since I invented this, it's a lot easier for me. Take and place the foot. Oh, I was going to say, if you don't have a 7 millimeter wide snap-on bar, we give you adapters that make it so you can attach all of the creative feet onto any sewing machine. That's the Singer Slant. For those of you who have Bernina, we have you can use an adapter like this, or Bernina has a, an adapter to make it so you can sew or attach seven millimeter feet onto your machine. And for those of you who have a Foff or a Janome, and a, you have a nine millimeter wide bar that goes across, <laughs> all kinds of, this little red stocking for his still hanging around. Then you'll use the B adapter in our kit and, re and take your machine, snap on an adapter off your machine. This is what it looks like when the Bernina has the adapter attached to it. So all of it's very easy and we guarantee our feet fit all sewing machines. No matter how new or old your machine, we also warranty them for life. If your dog chews them up, as long as he spits them out, we'll give you a new foot. And we don't even make you send the foot back. We have you take a picture and email it in now. That saves us a lot of trouble. So if your ribbon is wider than the opening on the foot, then you'll pull out the larger guide. Or if it's smaller, you'll go to the smaller guide. I'm going to select a stitch on my machine. And let's see. I gotta put my cap back on. If Amy were in the feed, she'd be saying, put your cap back on. I'm gonna have to check on her, make sure she's okay. I don't know what I, why my lid isn't going on. I lost my lid, there we go. This stitch right here is the shell tuck stitch. And one of you mentioned this in the school, you're having trouble getting your shell tuck stitch to go over. And I, you might just use the blanket stitch instead, and then you have to make the width wider. If your width doesn't go as wide, then look for another stitch. You can use the most popular of all of the stitches for sewing ribbon is this one here. Gosh, my brain. I can't remember the last time I said the name of that stitch. I'll just select it, and then I'll know what it is. Okay, that's the feather stitch, and that's a really easy stitch for the sewing machine to sew. I want to move the webcam for you so you can see. Here we go. I'll try to do it without making you dizzy. Okay, so this is what the shell tuck stitch looks like. And on the machine that I have, which is a baby lock made by Brother, you can see it has feather stitch written there so you can know what it's called. But any of these stitches that you see can be used on the ribbon. This is time to have some fun. There are things to consider though. This is the shell tuck stitch. And you can see it faces this way. On my machine, I have the ability to change its position and have it flip to the other side. So that is the, the solution for whoever it was in the school that was asking about why you couldn't get the shell tuck to go on the edge of a quilt. Because what she was wanting to do was to take a quilt and I don't think you can see it. Yeah, all the way over in the left hand corner, you see stitching running through a multicolored uh, panel like piece of fabric and basically it's just a gorgeous piece of fabric and I stitched down it using different trims and uh, you can finish the edge using a shell tuck and a rat tail cording it's the fastest way to bind a quilt 
So I have selected, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to mute because I'm going to cough again. I need to drink some water, you guys. I don't have anywhere to be today, so however long. So you're going to get to see so close, right? Isn't this awesome? This shot. I love this, having this new camera and I'm, I want to see the color of this thread on this. I'm going to use the feather stitch and the feather stitch itself. This is one of the reasons you want to test. It's hard to see that fabric. The stitch itself, when it in the machine, there's settings. It says it's a 5.0 width. Now this ribbon is a 3.0 width if you're going to use a double needle and sew both sides. You want a 3.0. The distance, the distance between or from one edge to the other of the non feathered edge is a 3.0 distance. And for those of you, so you're a novice and, uh, and I'm talking kind of like a foreign language, aren't I? A lot of people leave one foot on the machine and one needle on the machine and then someday all of a sudden the needle breaks and they have no idea what to do. So just know that the feet make me look good. I got I am not looking very organized. I moved a bunch of stuff around. Oh, so then we have to remember, it's kind of like putting your keys somewhere different and then trying to remember where you put them. Oh, I know for sure. I'm going to remember I'm putting them here. And then an hour later you go to leave and you can't remember. The double needles come in a wide variety of different widths or spacing between the needles. Most sewing machines can't use this needle 8.0 wide because the opening in the throat plate has to be nine millimeter wide to accommodate that distance. If you have a Singer slant sewing machine, this is the widest needle that you should use is the 3.0 and then they do come in different sizes. So the 3.0 is the spacing and the 9.90 there is a 9014 for the size of the tip. And you can see the goal is to get the needle to be on either side of the ribbon, but still on the ribbon. If you guys want me to do some, use a double needle for a part of this, I'll, I'll be happy to accommodate. So the goal is when you're using decorative stitches to see whether or not the stitch is going to fall on the ribbon where you want it. And this is what the machine comes with is a five. It comes set as a 5.0 width and 2.5 length. I'm going to change your camera angle without you having to watch me do it. So you don't get dizzy since I'm already making you dizzy. <laughs> there we go. I think this camera angle is better. So you can see from the top, maybe if you can't get your stitch to fall on the ribbon, which I'll sew a little bit, I haven't done any adjusting. So this would by you be like you taking it out of the package and you have no idea what you're doing and the stitch is falling perfectly on the ribbon. If it wasn't, it's because your sewing machine doesn't line up with the ribbon and it has no idea what, where that ribbon is going to be beneath the needle. 
So this is why you want to test. So on this one, even though it still looks pretty good, <laughs> more of the stitch is falling off the ribbon than on the ribbon. So this is why you test so that you can move the guide because you shouldn't move your needle over on a zigzag stitch or when using a double needle. If you choose a double needle and it's perfect for the ribbon and then you go, well, I want to move it over because the ribbon is over here and you move your needle to the other needle position, that needle that's out here will hit the metal plate on your machine and break. That's why some of the computerized or most of the computerized machines actually are set that when you're in a double needle, they won't let you move your needle position left and right. So if you have a button and you push it, which I can show you that this machine does have this, right here. If you push that, you'll, whoops, right here. If you push that button and you put it on double needle, it'll stop you from forgetting what you're doing and then breaking your needle on the throat plate. Then double needle is intimidating enough. We certainly don't need it to break. I am trying to find my chapstick. I know I have some here. There we go. And I have some stocking fuzz that's driving me crazy. Still hanging around here from stocking embroidery day. I'm going to mute for a second. All right, so I like the way that stitch looks and what stitch would not be appropriate? A stitch that moves forward and back a lot. So there's a heart in here. Let me see. I've been wanting to try Ooh, something else that's really cool. Let me show you. Ah, without making you dizzy. This is what would happen if you use a decorative stitch with a double needle you, with two different colors of thread. Wouldn't that be pretty? However, it limits the size of the double needle that you have on your machine. So you'd probably use a 2.0 double needle. And remember that would have to do with the spacing. Let's see. I wanted to see if I have hearts in here. This one's really cool for decorative stitching. And guess what it's called? It's called the couching foot. Oh, I got to get out of the double needle. I wish I didn't look so sad. So this stitch right here is called the decorative stippling stitch. And it's kind of like stippling on a quilt, right? It's really pretty on ribbon as well. But I think I have a heart and I wanted to try it. I don't know all the stitches on this machine. I rarely just play around. Oh man, I need to calibrate my screen. <laughs> Hello. I need to switch so you're not going through that. Have you ever tapped the outer edge of your screen and panicked because it went it went quiet or dark that's because it is needing to be calibrated and in your machine you got a little stylus kind of pen and you use that to teach the machine where the outside edges of your screen is this machine may not have the hearts I have too many machines. I just did it again. 
we're not going to do that. I'm going to stick with the feather stitch for now and make a note to calibrate that. I'm sorry I can't keep up with the chat, you guys. Enjoy interacting with one another and know that you need to pay attention because the giveaway winner has to have the answer at the end of the video. And you're going to be getting some trims to sew. And another secret prize inside. You stitched out a sampler. It's a very good idea. So you can take a piece of fabric and fuse a stabilizer, a permanent stabilizer onto the back of it using a white fabric. I don't recommend muslin even though a lot of people do because it's the least expensive fabric. They, it, can, it can be sticky on the needle and make your machine not behave as nicely as it will when you go and actually make something. So use a really nice piece of fabric and you can use a solid so that you don't have anything but the stitch pattern and, and do sew a row of your stitching of one stitch pattern and change the width and as you do right on the fabric how wide it is and the length and all of that and so you end up with this chart of fabric and your stitches and then you can just lay it down there and go I want to do that stitch on this ribbon this ribbon is four millimeters wide that stitch is four millimeters wide and be on your way much quicker I got such a mess and I'm wearing a fancy shirt whoops that you could create using this same foot this is sequins and you can sew rows of sequins side by side on any fabric and apply it to a blouse whoop that's looking at part of my toucan this is what I get to see on this side of the machine he's my little buddy my little sewing buddy All right, here we go. So you can try to insert the ribbon with the foot on the machine. But if you do so with, the, with no fabric beneath, the fabric goes right down into the zigzag opening. So rather than taking the foot off, you can slide it in, but have fabric beneath it. And you won't be able to see the fabric because the foot will be covering up the edge of the fabric. Your guide then is the ribbon. So want to make sure the ribbon is on the edge of the material. And then, I don't know where this thread's coming from. Is that my needle thread? Always have the threads beneath the toe and to the left before you begin. And if you don't have a rotary hook sewing machine or a top loading bobbin on your machine put your finger down for the first couple stitches and then you should be okay I'm trying to find my glasses there they are I forgot to put the stitch back on oops and it worked out to be really good you know what I'm going to do I'm just going to show you how I'll get around this since I sewed a few stitches already oh, did I st oh my goodness I just backed it up I'm gonna get away with it looking not at the needle but at the ribbon you want to keep it on the edge of the fabric and then you have I didn't I didn't set it up again because I started talking to you guys you can use Christmassy ribbon as well yes any kind of ribbons that you want. It's 
So after you've sewn one, you take it to the cutting table, which is a mess. Way too much stuff here. I try to be organized. Mouse off, put away. These are really cool. See how pretty those are? And I believe I got these out of Joann's fabric and they have a lot of trim in the back of the store. Hobby Lobby also is a good source for these and Michaels. These are what's called a chisel cut and they have like a, a diamond, diamond shape to them that make them sparkle a lot more. I really like them. I wish I could say I have them and I'm able to sell them to you, but I believe that's the last of that ribbon or that those pearls that I have. And you want to cut making sure that you're lined up with this edge of the fabric right here. And I'm going to straighten up both ends of this. Making sure that I'm straight here as well. Apparently I didn't cut that very good. I'll take it all the way down. There we go. Okay. The next thing to do is to cut this two and a half inches because we're going based on the width of the fabric. These fabrics are so long. You could also just lay it down on top and sew, but I prefer to cut this. For those of you who think I make things look easy, I definitely never make cutting look easy, do I? And that's partly because I'm dealing with a small space. And we want to go here, two and a half inches. So we've got one, two and a half. Better to have it be a little bigger than small. So I'm just gonna go cut it at, I'm just gonna cut it the width of this ruler right now. Making sure that it's square. We can always make this the right size by just gluing in the exact distance. Now if you went like if you went like this, uh, you'd have your stripes going the wrong way. As before, I'm gluing on the What did I do to this lid? Dot I tried to do something with this bottle and I messed it up. Oh well. So there's little dots on there. And then you just slide your finger across like that, connecting the dots and 
you'll end up with some on your finger. That's why sometimes it looks like my fingers are all dried out. It's really just the water soluble stabilizer dries and becomes a piece of stabilizer. It actually locks the bias in the fabrics when it dries. So allowing this to dry would make it even better. I'm going, I'm going to place a piece of fabric on, t on, on the top of this so that I don't have to measure and show you. So this will help me gauge how far over to put it. And I want the ribbon to be there. So we're going to take it over a quarter inch. can double check against what I did before because sometimes my brain doesn't remember what I did. So that's at two and a half on the outside of the ribbon. And you want to make sure you maintain the same all the way around. So that would be correct coming in a quarter inch. And turning on the Caterpillar light tablet will help. If I can find my cord. This was from the Christmas stocking. The Caterpillar light tablets are about to go up in price. You can see how much longer or wider I cut that. You can use your cutting mat also to help you. So we want to be at 19 and a half. There we go. Oops. I need to change this camera this position. So placing this edge of the ribbon on one of the lines coming over, this is 15, 16, 17 and a half. So I want the ribbon to be there. And then secure the glue to that and wait for it to dry or you can pin it or you can put a little clip on it to keep it from moving. And proceed. You'll probably find it easier to always have the ribbon be on this side of the fabric. And I definitely didn't set it up correctly. I had it set correctly and then I moved it. This will be overlapped, so that's why it doesn't matter that I hopped it back. I'm also not able to see where I'm going because the cameras and all the other equipment in front of me is in the way. You don't want to hold down the fabric because the stitch is moving forward and back. And if you push down, you'll stop that feeding and, and distort your stitches. So it's a very, very light touch. And notice that I don't hold on to the ribbon. Let the foot hold on to the ribbon for you. And I had mine stuck underneath my tools that are in front of me. If you've ever sewn ribbon like this before and had your fabric get all puckered up. That's because you probably glued your ribbon down, pinned it down, or basted it down first and then tried to sew afterward. And the reason that the sequins and ribbon foot works so well for this is because I designed it so that you didn't have to hold on to the ribbon because ribbon is woven like blue jeans, like denim. It has more than one layer in direction of weave and it's non-stretchable. So a universal needle 
has a really hard time finding its way in between the fibers on the ribbon. So it needs to have nothing holding the ribbon at all for the needle as it goes through to allow the ribbon to shift ever so slightly, little fractions of a millimeter movement so that the needle can go through the ribbon without destroying the ribbon. Otherwise, I mean, if you want to, you could use a sharp needle and cut and destroy your ribbon and then be at risk of your trim shredding over time. We don't want that. Always pull from behind the foot because the trim is in the guide right now. And then cut from behind the foot. And we are building a quilt with no backing, with no puckers. Once again, we're going to cut. So it's a cut, a cut as you go, a cut and sew as you go, free motion, not free motion. I'm loopy. I went to the wrong screen. I made my button set up better and it's so awesome, but my brain has to learn it. It's not quite perfect right here, but you know what? The way that we're sewing, we're not using a seam allowance. So we can get away with things we couldn't get away with if we were. I really need a new ruler. Most of my lines are rubbed off. The next fabric is this white creamy color. And another reason to back your fabric with a stabilizer is because you're darker color fabrics will show through your light color fabrics. So if you lay that on top, you're at risk of seeing this, the uh, fabric color showing through. Once again, go past the actual edge of the fabric and we're gonna go ahead and glue it down again. To make it easier, I am placing them on this fabric. You don't have to Place the drops as close as I did previously. This is about a half inch in between and just a little drop. And this is the liquid-based water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle. Imagine making a boho bag this way. So what I'm showing you is now we can, now it's how far over you want it to be based on the next trim that you're going to sew. So what's really cool about this process is even if you don't make it right, nobody knows. If I go and place this now under the foot this way, now I'm going to have to guide the ribbon on this side and I want you to see how to handle that. Pulling out this ribbon, making sure that the needle thread didn't go with it, because that can happen sometimes. Make sure that the threads are both beneath the foot and under the toe. I didn't need to go, I didn't need to have that much fabric extending out, but more is better than not enough. And you could change to another color metallic. I'm going to stick with one just to make this quicker. And here we have another ribbon to determine the right and wrong side. This one has a muted backside and a more reflective right side. So you want the shiny side of the ribbon up. Once again, it doesn't have any bias. So this is why 
people struggle to sew ribbon now because of its lack of similar nature to the actual fabric. To offset that, if you stabilize all of your fabrics with a fusible stabilizer that doesn't stretch, then all of the fabrics and the trim will all behave as one. Now raising the foot to insert the trim with the fabric beneath the foot and then you scoot it and you can move the fabric as well to get the ribbon to go back there. Now I'm going to be watching on this side of the foot so you can see why it's easier to pick a side because you don't know how it's going to line up until you do a test again. And it's definitely easier on the other side because now I'm having to look on this side of the camera that's in front of me. So picking a side also helps you not contort your body. Although there will be times when the, if you're making a, a large quilt that it will become too much and you will be forced to use the other side of the guide as well. You have a ton of pretty trims. You have to go. Well, it was nice having you, Helen. I'll see you next time. Bye. The transition didn't go. Here we go. So I'm looking at this, this side of the foot now, making sure the ribbon stays on that edge, but not by holding the ribbon, by steering the foot. Happy Christmas. As I come up on the ribbon, it was hesitating before. So I'm, I'm going to help it by, by just pulling a little bit from behind. However, increasing the stitch length a little tiny bit would also help it get over. And I remember the last thing I did had full foot pressure. So to get over your trims without having as much difficulty, increase the or decrease the amount of pressure that the foot is applying to the fabric. If you can't lift your foot with by putting your finger underneath the screw holding the foot assembly, then you have a lot of pressure on the foot. And I always have to remember where it is. There we go. So I've taken it all the way down to the lightest pressure. And now I can take my finger beneath it and lift the foot. If you can see, that's how hard the foot pushes down against the feed dogs that are pulling the fabric through from behind. So right here, it was hesitating and the stitches got a little bit too close. Isn't that a pretty thread though? Oh, I love it. Most people aren't going to notice your little mistakes, even though you will. You know, I wish I had another fabric, but I don't. So this one's not going to have a Christmas fabric in it. I'm sure I have it somewhere. What have I got? It's kind of weird. I had it all together. I probably stole the Christmas fabric another time to make something else. I feel like I'm just going to have this be on the other side as well. What do you think? Think that's a good idea? Good evening, JJ. Where are you? That it's evening for you. Oh, that's
that's right, it is kind of evening. I forgot what day it was. Once again, looking through here and up here to see that you're squaring this off. It's also better to look by standing, getting standing up and looking straight down at it instead of like I am being, I'm saying seated. And we're going to square off both sides. You could also have your iron on and press in between. And if you feel brave, you could cut this to the exact size. I just feel like, why bother? Just keep it long, cut it afterward. How big is this mat? This, this is the Ultra, and it is, if I can remember correctly, so it's 18 inches this way and 24 inches that way and uh, it's 25 inches, but the actual screen area where it lights up is 17 by 24. And it comes with this mat right here. So I'm looking at this going, can I cut that straight? Do I need to? Not really. I can just lay the next fabric down straight dot dot and yes even alone i go dot 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 ah it's a habit that i have i'm glad you're finding this information beneficial and welcome it gets dark way too early right now i know So a quarter inch over and try to keep it straight using the lighted mat to help you. You can see the seam allowance be beneath there and see that you are straight. By lining up the red fabric with the line and then again over here lining it up. And you can shift it because the glue stays wet for a while, enough time. And now we're ready to go ahead and repeat what I just did. But now, if I put it in the machine this way, now I gotta move it over to the other side. But I, I honestly didn't have to adjust the foot. So I think I'm making more to do about that. It's just you have to look on this side for one way and then look over here on the other way and we're looking not at the foot, but at the ribbon, making sure the ribbon stays on the fabric's edge without holding the ribbon, but just steering the fabric. It's like you're steering the boat. Oops, wrong camera. The needle thread got out of the needle. Thank God I have a needle threader. Well, that didn't work. Why not? There we go. As I mentioned before, it's easier to place the ribbon into the guide or to slide it inside. It'd be fun if I had another ribbon. I thought I had three. if you cut the end on it. And this ribbon has a right side and a wrong side. So now with a diagonal cut, I gotta get some of these lights out of my, this equipment out of my way. There we go. Lower the foot. If you don't lower the foot, you have no tension on your thread and you get thread 
loops on the bottom of your fabric. You also may find that you do a better job or your stitch looks nicer if you use a reduced thread tension. So I am steering the boat and this is the water and the foot has got the water. It's kind of like the wake behind a boat. All right, maybe that's not a good analogy. <laughs> So on this one, I'm going to increase my stitch length just to show you that I'm really not guiding this ribbon. We'll just get it out of the way altogether. Here I am now approaching this ribbon and I'm going to increase the stitch length. It is currently a 2.5. I'm taking it to a 3.5 just as long as it takes to get over the green ribbon or as soon as I see it advance now shortening it back down to a 2.5 rather than trying to use my fingers to be the steerer or the feed dogs I feel like I'm really crooked because I'm sitting off to the side Oops. I gotta change this camera position. I'm too short. I can't look over it. Either that or I need to get taller all of a sudden. Now I'm centered. See, I'm off to the side. Your, your perspective is off. That's why it's important to center yourself with the needle when sewing. It helps you sew straighter and also to put your elbows down when sewing. And I have so much clutter. I've had trouble This is why I have these little pillows <sighs> and I haven't been doing, I haven't been having my elbow down all this time. Now I feel better. Scooting over, I can see. <sighs> What's with all this ha <sighs> in? Cutting the fabric, not the ribbon. Go off the edge and I'm going to try the scissor button this time which I haven't been doing. Oops, well, that was a fail. <laughs> Oopsie, oopsie. You know, doing this live video is, it's no easy feat, especially, <laughs> that's a foot joke. <laughs> Go ahead and ask some questions as I'm going to pay attention as I prepare to cut this, if you have any. You'll find these products at creativefeet.com or at dealers that carry the Creative Feet brand. Make sure you ask them that it's Creative Feet brand because there's a lot of knockoffs of my products. I invented this one when I was 20 years old. I'm now about to turn 61. You see how you could turn that into a block. I know your minds are going, hmm, we don't have to make a pillow. What else can we make this into? My daughter's in town. <laughs> Whenever my daughter is in town, I talk like her. <laughs> They are going to stay for the winter. They're in the earth moving business and they live in a snowy area that last year they stayed. They talked about, and this is a recap of what I'm making right now. There's some extra fabric. You don't need to know my personal stuff. Just know that I'm very excited and a little bit distracted. Oh yeah, I can use, this is the back fabric. Don't want to do that. This fabric was fused, two fabrics fused together with right sides facing out on both sides. And this is how you get ready to make napkins. And with the satin edge foot, you can make napkins. I could also, 
there's some Christmas stocking fur fly floating through the air. So I forgot what I was going to say. You could also use the satin edge foot and instead of doing placing a ribbon, we could use the same application and create a satin stitch. Would you like me to try that? You guys get to control me on these live shows, but you got to talk. Oh, this is a crazy quilt lesson. So we'll keep it on crazy quilting. This one's pretty. I like it. I'm all, it's funny because I got, got a little beclumped, excited um, at how this is looking. Kind of feels snowy. What do you think? Does that, does that feel a little snowy and like little Christmas trees? So if I keep all the green th ribbon running this way and all the red ribbon running that way, I think it's going to give it kind of like a Christmas tree look. So position it on the cutting mat and then we're going to bring it over a quarter inch. Before we do so, we place the liquid base glue. You gotta talk. It might be nice to have that option. Are you saying I should have some Zoom classes so that you guys can talk as well? Because if that is what you're mentioning, that is what we do in the school. Create with Claire Rowley .com. If you're not yet a student, in the school, which is a free thing to do. You just join the school. Do so. And now that I've gotten a lot better at the live feeds, I do intend to have more all student live Zooms where you can be, I'll probably invite people in, like have you raise your hand if you want to be on screen and then click and you'll be able to talk. So. It's all exciting. Once again, I'm going to peek through the cutting mat using the light. Now you could, instead of this, flip it over without light and just measure over. Now this fabric was stabilized, as I mentioned at the beginning, because of its construction. It, it's, it's a metallic and it stretches out and can shred really easy. You can see I have a little bit of a bubbly appearance here, which makes me want to go get my ironing mat. I'm going to switch to the green ribbon. Both of these ribbons I was able to do with the same stitch. I'm going to switch it out. I'm going to sew a different stitch on this one. I think I'll use the stitch I mentioned earlier in the video. And what I'm using is the, what's it called? <laughs> shell tuck stitch, which is used for lingerie to create little shell hem lines on uh, fine stretchy fabrics or fabrics cut on the bias. So you can use chenille, you could, you could create a, a scarf and use this and have all the edges be shell tucked under or a shell look. However, the shell tuck stitch points in this direction. I should be doing it backwards. So it points in this direction and I want it to point in that direction. If I'm going to use it on the edge of something uh, on this, it doesn't matter because we're on top. However, it does matter. That's right. It does. I'll explain the difference and what matters when using this stitch for this is it has a straight stitch and then it goes over and a straight stitch and then it goes over and I would like the straight stitch part to be on this fabric not trying to get on the edge of that 
and you look at this and and if you can't tell which side is right and which side is wrong know that it'll be more droopy see how it curves up that is the right side so it actually tries to curve to the wrong side and that's true of fabrics as well if you can't tell right from wrong the fabric always wants to hug its belly hug its underside so the shell tuck stitch looks like a blanket stitch and it is pointing the correct direction but the width of the stitch is 4.0 and it needs to go wider I'm going to take it the width to a 5.0 and hope it's hope it's good you want to hold on to the, the threads for the first couple stitches I'm positioning the guide for this stitch get the ribbon out of the way So basically we want the ribbon to be on the edge so I need to move you can see the slot and we want the slot to be lined up with that so we move the guide over and that moves the ribbon over to the stitch I'm gonna go wider again 6.0 width is better this is why you test first so just to show you how well this foot works we can do that and now looking here you just don't want to get that let this go that over there and then the needle strike it so that makes it so you can see the slot on the foot and keep it right on the edge this camera is bouncing I think it's leaning against the sewing machine I'll try to stabilize it What is it? it's trying to it's trying to focus on that and it's a lot for it to deal with so let's see you can also look up here at the guide and here we go thank you for that Donna I'm getting the ironing surface ready. Why fight it? Ah, too much fabric. Oh, you know what I could do? I could use the wrong side of that as one of my fabric. This is the fabric I was talking about earlier. Let's just test this con this idea. See? It loves to absorb ink. So with the inks that you find on our website, you should be able to color this rubber material and make your rubber husband any color that you want it to be instead of having to use white and I don't know where my rubber husband is let me see so you guys can see what the heck I'm talking about if you don't know got no idea where I put it oh well Merry Christmas or Mele Kaliki Maka. That's what we always say in our family. We spent a lot of time in Hawaii. Now I have that song in my head. Mele Kaliki Maka is the. Do you guys know the rest? Do I have you singing now? There's a long piece of thread coming from somewhere. I'm trying to think of who sang that. 
My mom and I used to watch a lot of old movies, and uh, I feel like Doris Day may have sung that. My mom sang like Doris Day and looked like Sally Field. My treasure. I miss her terribly. All right. My trusty little ironing surface. I'm going to iron from the back side only because we're working with metallic on the top and you don't want to melt your metallic and also just don't use a really hot iron. Wouldn't be a bad idea. What was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say, you guys. Sorry. Must be over an hour since the show started. And this is pretty much, you know, what I continue to do. Ironing in between is a good idea. So you get a nice, crisp, more accurate cutting of the next piece. Should I continue with the metallic or should I use the red on this side, on the upside down side? I'll let you guys look at it and then I really need your help. So get your fingers ready to type and tell me plain or stripes and that will help me so much. I'm going to iron this because it's wrinkled. So this way or have it be like this. This is too small, or I would use black, but too small. Plainer stripes, you guys. Am I saying I did sing? <laughs> yes, I did. It's Christmas. I feel Christmas coming. So I have decided that I will at very least next week release an actual video or be live. So red or silver? Should I alternate? <laughs> You like the mat? I love the mat. You mean this, my ironing mat? You know, this is a June Taylor. This is a June Taylor mat. And on one side it has a cutting board and the other side it has a mat. But if you iron on it enough, the cutting board gets warped. So then I just wrapped it with the fabric that I like and I have it pinned on the back side. I'll let you look. I'll let you see how I did it. <laughs> very classy, huh? See, it just folded under your fabric and I have it pinned here. Just a couple pins, one on each side. And then it, you know, I have it wrapped over and over again like a burrito. And that is my mat. And you can see it's not straight, but I can tell you this, I love this for an ironing mat. I like being able to change it. The lighted mat, yes. The Caterpillar light tablets are about to go up in price. We were just given the inc price increase and I haven't had a chance to increase the price yet, but I will probably do that tomorrow if I have time. So take advantage of me. <laughs> that sounds bad. Now's the time to take advantage of the lower price and they won't arrive to you until January because they're on their way here. So did we get a bunch of votes for red? Yes. Oh, we got silver and red. One, two, three, plain. Now I'm worried about Amy. 
I haven't seen her in here. I can text her on this. By the way, you can text my... You have the ability to text the business phone. She did just have a loss in the family, and um, so she she may be with family. We'll find out. I still haven't heard from Tina, and I'm worried about her. See, this is what happens. You become part of my family, and everybody in here has, gets to know one another. So, absolutely, the cutter pillar is is great for anything. You want to make sure you're putting a pocket right on top of a blouse in the right spot. You can lay it on top and see through it and straighten it out with the millimeter, you know, fractions of a millimeter adjustment, as long as you can see through it. It has three different levels of light, depending on your eyesight. And you should be cutting with the line straight. I'm going diagonally, which is just so that I don't move too many things on my table. So I have right side, I'm gonna, we went with red, correct? There are so many uses for this mat. Also inking and artistic stuff. Oops, I almost did right sides together. <laughs> that's the old way to do it. Okay, so that's because I got stripes down. So the, the principle behind this, I'm going to show you how, how wonky you can be. Look at that. That was because I cut that fabric not very good to begin with. Now, if somebody wanted to really check this out, you can see that I can take this, but I don't have to cut it right now. I can cut it after. I just need to make sure I'm over a quarter inch. And here you can see that's just bigger. We don't have to cut that now. Kind of like paper piecing. We don't have to cut it now, so don't. Why bother? But I am going to make sure that I have some of the liquid base on this. And using, this time about an inch apart. Skip that and move my way up. You'll notice that I always slide my finger across it. This makes the water that's in it dissipate, makes it dry quicker. So lining up on a line, looking up here, looking here as well. This is one of the most popular products that we have at Creative Feet are the, well, besides the Creative Feet are these Caterpillar light tablets. Making sure you go past on the ends a little bit in case you didn't cut straight. And as you can see, I hadn't. Mostly because I like to show you what to do if you're working from your scrappies, you know. And just because you get a jelly roll doesn't mean they cut it straight. Right? Have you ever noticed that Sometimes the jelly wool pieces are, they have this gradual angle to them. Shame, shame. I did the wrong thing. On the wrong side. I'm going to do that again. So what you want to do is you want to do this side, that side. So this side, that side, flip it. That side, that side, flip it. That side, that side, flip it. So now it's really long. Do I have a short one? Repeat. Okay, this is definitely solid side up, which is not the wrong side for this. I love using the wrong side of the fabric sometimes. You know you're gonna get the same color hue. Slide your finger across. Don't push down on it, just a light, ever so lightly. And now, using the lines on the cutting mat, 
kind of anchor it and go in a quarter inch and exceed it at least a quarter inch out here. My thumb is almost completely healed, you guys. You had a jelly roll once that had two and a half at one end and two at the other. Oh my gosh. That's criminal. How did you deal with it? Did you tell anyone? That's just wrong. I think I'm going to just cut across here at least a little bit to get rid of this long tail. I'm just going to cut it a quarter inches, a quarter inch past. So I hope what you're getting is how forgiving this is. You can use that jelly roll that's all wonky for this particular project. Here we have a little messy there from I didn't cut that well. And follow it down, so there and there. Take it over a quarter inch past it, making sure that this fabric is on that line. And so squaring off is so much easier using one of these mats. And this is different than other boards in that it's designed for you to push hard against the surface. If you pushed hard against the surface of some light tablets, you might crack it. This is designed for you to push and roll against it. We do sell the mat separately though. So should you want to try it on a, on a board you have, you can give it a try, but just be aware that you need to be careful about how hard you push down. I tend to push down harder than I should. Now, part of the reason I want to do the this side, this side, because you could just go around and around and around, is that I want to have the green ribbon going this way. There we go. And now the shell tuck stitch is going the opposite direction. There is a mirror button on my machine that allows me to mirror the stitch and move the straight stitch part over to the right. Anything to speed up the process. So I switched it to the opposite side. But I still need to adjust the guide. Anything to stop you from touching that ribbon. You are not in charge of the ribbon. It's ideal if this stitch doesn't hit the ribbon, so I'm going to go a little wide. I'm going to set the width a little wider, which I should have done on the other side as well. Remember, I mentioned reducing the thread tension. It's really important to do that on wider. The wider your width, the lighter your thread tension should be, and you'll have less chance of puckering. I went too far because I'm not centered with my needle. So you'll do even better than me because you will actually be following the directions, which is to not sit to the side of your machine, but to sit in front of your machine. I, I'm not doing as good a job as I would if you weren't watching and I weren't letting the camera sit where my eyes would normally be. Mentioning that reminds me, I do have Jelly, oh my gosh, I was leaning against my ribbon. Note to self, do not lean your body against your ribbon <laughs> because it stops it from feeding. Ah. So that was not the foot's fault, that was my fault. Your connection dropped. What could we use that for? Time to decide, and I'm gonna try to iron out this puckering that I got. Darn it, I like perfect. 
We can always try for perfection. Rather than ripping that out, I'm going to try to get it to sit down. And as I mentioned, that was not the foot's fault. That was me stopping the ribbon from feeding on a stitch that goes past and you can see how the stitch got tighter there. I'm going to press on the top but not leave it sit very long. There we go. Stripe. See how fast it comes together once you get into the bigger pieces? I'm going to press this. You can also use spray starch to make your fabrics have less stretch. On a jelly roll, I pretty much always use spray starch just in case they didn't cut it straight. Whoopsie. And even though there's brands made for sewing, this is what I prefer. I think it's like $2 and something a can still still very affordable despite the the current state of our economies the cutting mat that i'm using is the cutter pillar which you can find uh, in the links that i will be adding in the description once the live is over however there is a link in the chat to my website and it's creativefeet.com what was i going to say oh and we have a sale going on right now so you type in all uppercase stocking and you get 15 percent off and the price of all the cutter pillars are going up there's not a maybe it's an absolute as soon as i have the chance to update our pricing i will be doing so on our site we also have a closeout on some bobbins, pre-wound bobbins. These are deals that will never repeat. So, and over $69, you get free shipping in the United States. And we, we give you back some money if you're buying internationally to help you with your shipping. The details are at the top of the Creative Pete site. We have click for more information and that'll tell you how we handle international giving you a better deal than you would if you just ordered without clicking on that and learning about it. Actually, you don't have to do anything. We do it automatically. All of a sudden, you'll just get some money back and we send you an email explaining why. But you gotta go over $69 US. Once again, we're doing the stripes now. You can see that these stripes are going that way does that bother you? Does it bother you, Claire? <laughs> or should I, should I make it so all the stripes go the same way, you guys? I didn't hear, and so I do not care. <laughs> okay. What you're seeing me use is the Ultra. Trying to reach for something. Knocking other things over. Ay, ay, ay. Ah, I'm sorry if that was loud. That was the board hitting my microphone. 
Okay. Oops. This is another product that they have. Now this one doesn't light up. However, it sits on top of the one that does light up. So should you not want to have to spin your fabric around the board how I've been doing, I should be using this more often. You can actually see through this mat sitting on top of that mat. And you can remove this, this mat here so you only see the lines that are there. Oh, I'm, I think I'm just gonna, it's gonna get too big at some point. It's easier for you guys to see usually when the, oh, that worked out really nice. I'm thinking. I get quiet when I think. <laughs> then you can just spin it around and do the other side. There's also a glass mat for this in addition to the glass mat for the basic. So much to learn, isn't there? <laughs> this is the basic glow and I think it's so pretty. I wish they were all green. I'm fond of that. I think it goes really nicely with my elbow pad. So this is half of the size of the Ultra. And there's another one that's the same size that's silver. And it is the premium, and it has, it's the only one with a battery backup. They can't put a battery backup in this size. They've been trying to work that out. When you get the mats, they all come with a lined mat. But what you're going to find is that they, I think they made these go all the way to the edge now on the lines. That's a really old mat for me. So you can kind of see the comparison. This is half of it. Now say you want to do something without any lines. For instance, art. You want to trace something. Or for instance, if you want to do appliques, then you can use this mat. And this is called the edge to edge mat. And the reason they call it that is because it goes all the way to the edge of the board. It has no black lines on it. However, it does have this grid that's a centimeter apart. So each one of these lines is a centimeter. And what that actually is, is the product that they emboss onto the back of all their mats that prevents you from accidentally bumping the mat and having it slide. If you take, I do happen to have this here, a traditional mat. Well, it's, it's not gonna slide on their mat but it slides. It's real easy to accidentally slide it. So that embossing that they do of this sticky kind of thing makes it so you won't accidentally slip and hit your blade on the mat or on the light tablet. All I can tell you is I use this all the time. I use both depending on what I'm doing. And they're, they're pretty strong. You can get totes for them to take them to class with you. 
Okay, back to this. I'm going to see if Amy's responded. I'm okay. My daughter needed a ride to the airport. Thanks for checking. Yay. So we know Amy's okay. Now we need to still find out about Tina. And Tina's a regular in the school. I hope you all will be a regular. Back to this. We're going to go ahead and not care that the stripes are alternating. <laughs> I shouldn't care about that right now. But I do. Just get out of the way. There we go. And we're, I'm going to take it out further. Once again, you can see how poorly I cut it. I'm going to go ahead and cut it now and sure it up, making sure that I have this line lined up on that. And as long as I have it stick out a quarter inch past the smallest piece, always. When you're done, you won't know that it was ever not perfect. What you'll have on the outside is the appearance that everything went perfectly fine. I'm going to cut this across, make it a little bit, and that's why you don't want to have it be the same length. Because if you're like me and you went, well, I'm just going to cut it. And you can see I cut it at an angle. It doesn't matter because I still have room on these sides to cut it off. Somebody that talks more than you, Wendy and Brenda. JJ is a chatty one. We appreciate the chats. The more you type, the more questions you ask, the more you like. The more the algorithms on all the websites think that you're enjoying this and will share. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you sharing because sharing is caring, as they say. I'm corny because my daughter's in town. Once again, slide your fingers across. And now this side is going to be stripes up. Lining it up again with the cutting mat. Whoops. And trying to line it up with the white fabric. Don't have a cutting mat? Remember, you can flip it over and work from the back side and make sure that you have at least a quarter inch on that white fabric. You could also work from the top and measure from one to the other, making sure that it measures the same. I can't find my itty bitty ruler. So going like that to measure to see that your spacing is good. But honestly, it's like that's one of the reasons I love this so much is you do not have to worry. I thought I had three colors of ribbon. This would be pretty. This is actually the handle to a purse. <laughs> and this is a pattern and video inside of my school, inside of the YouTube channel on uh, cell phone purses. So if you, it's a great gift to give to someone and has a zipper application, the sequins and ribbon, satin edge foot, and pearls and piping foot, all three are used to construct this. And the pattern is free in the link just below the description of this. So I'm not going to cut this apart because it's a purse. It's done. But let's see what else I have. What other goodies I have? Ooh, I have yarn, but it's blue. That's not going to go. Oh, I have some rickrack. Some green rickrack. Should I do this? 
Should I do a little Rick Rack for you? <laughs> With that Rick your Rack, oh my gosh, I'm very corny. I can't wait to see my daughter. I can't wait to hug my daughter. Haven't hugged her since July. Would you like me to do that? You haven't used it in a long time. Why is that? So I'm deciding, should I use a stitch or should I use a double needle? So a double needle is good, but we can use a stitch on this as well. And it's, it's, it's fun to use our stitches. So I think I'm going to do that. How do we sew this though? What, which of the guides should we use on this? Knowing that there are three different, three different sides guides for the sequins and ribbon foot. If you bought our, my creative feet sequins and ribbon foot and didn't buy the additional accessory guides, then you want to pick those up. And there are three different guides, but four different openings. One feeds in yarn but actually all of the guides can hold yarn, which means you can do all of the different size yarns, not just one. So this is the ultimate couching foot. If you want, you can even write out Merry Christmas in yarn with this foot, not free motion. We actually use the feed dogs with this so that your stitch is more consistent than if you were to do free motion with it. Now there are people that have sworn they use this foot free motion. I do not, but I, this is something I got to film cause I, I didn't, I did this in, I think the VIP group and I never filmed it again. So if you want to learn how I did this, it's a great coaster for a coffee cup. <laughs> Let me know, give me a thumbs up, say, I want to learn how to sew in circles, or you can write circles. And isn't that festive? This is lace. This was all done with the sequins and ribbon foot and the octi hoops that you see here. And the octi hoops are what I use to monogram these stockings and to do the free motion quilting on this quilt. And you can mend sweaters and mend things you normally couldn't mend with it as well as do free motion embroidery. So if you'd like to learn how to do this, let me know. And I will take the time to film this and you can all do this with any sewing machine, as long as you have a zigzag stitch. So knowing that we have different size openings. You have to decide which guide to use for the Rick Rack. Let me pull this light out a little bit too close. As before, remember I said that when you have the wrong side, these trims will want to curl up to the wrong side. So with it facing down, if I were going to put this in this guide, you could see how much space it would take in this one. Which guide should I use for this? The quarter inch or the three eighths inch? Let's make it easier for you. The biggest or the medium? This will be the medium and the small one is somewhere. I can't find it right now. Yeah. I know what gadget you're talking about, JJ, and not all sewing machines can use it. And long before that was ever developed, we've been sewing in circles. So I'll film that as a edited video for all of you. Logic would tell you that you can't 
put that into the biggest of the openings because it's just too wide. And well, you can insert this into the biggest of the guides easily. It then feeds through straight without any issue at all. But we want this to struggle. We want to force this to go into that opening because the opening of this is the true size of rickrack. Rickrack, when you buy it, is measured by how wide the trim is as if this were a snake laying down on the ground. How wide is it then? It's quarter inch, which means you can sew up to the jumbo 3 8 inch, which ends up being an inch rickrack with this foot and go all the way down to the 16th inch wide rickrack, which ends up being about a, a eighth of an inch rickrack. So how do we get this to go into that opening? Go ahead and as before, trim to make it behave. Take the little bumps and cut off the bump. And I'm going to switch cameras. And then again, and proceed for about an inch and a half. These scissors have seen a better day. Mostly because I cut through all kinds of things on at a show with these about an inch and a half and then you just insert that into the guide and pull it through and as you pull it through you'll see it zigzag so it slithers it does the zigzag motion so you don't have to do use a zigzag stitch and you can use a double needle and sew both sides of your rick rack down at once or use a stitch and i'm going this is about also using our decorative stitches so i'm going to evaluate and i think there's a really cool one what was it that i used may not show up much because this is metallic thread on a metallic rick rack Let's see, what did I used to use? It's been a while, it's been before COVID since I did a show. And I used to play around and do different things. I can't remember. Gotta stop saying the word do. When did I start doing saying that? I don't know. Oh, yes. If you want to put yarn through the guide, you just lay a piece of thread down on the table and lay the yarn across it and then grab the two pieces of thread and then thread through. Or you can try using your little flosser thing. Now let me get this adjusted a little bit better so I don't make you dizzy. The colors definitely a little bit off on this camera but we don't mind because it can see better oh my goodness I'm talking just like my daughter was it the shell was it the feather stitch I don't have a lot so but I have enough to do two Shifting my chair over so I'm centered as best I can. What did I use? Yeah, it was the shell tuck. I mean the um, feather stitch. And the, and the settings that I used for it was 7 millimeter wide and 4 millimeter long. So I'm using quite a bit longer stitch length on the feather stitch than they engineered it to do. You'll see me often do this at the beginning and I'm where we'll cover it up 
so it doesn't matter. It's another way of tying a knot on the thread. So now you're going to see the rickrack swivel or slither through the guide. And this is important because if you use the other guide and it feeds through straight, what will happen is it will feed through straight and you won't have as much stitch laying on the rickrack. And we don't want the points to pull up. Ugh, got something under my nail. Awful. Sorry guys. Uh, I don't know what's under my nail. Oh, I need to center my body. Do you guys uh, remember Clotilda? <sighs> Dear to my heart. When I first started, I was in my early 20s and Clotilda took me under her wing. If you read my Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook, you'll hear or read the story about it. And so she was my mother on the road, I called her. And she passed quite a few years ago. Between her and Nancy Zeman, I have great mentors to have in the sewing industry. Many have passed. Carol Duvall as well. All very, very powerful women in the beginning. I gotta stop talking about it. I'm getting emotional. Oh, I mean, the reason I brought it up is Clotilda, when I first invented the foot, and for 10 years I was on the, the feet were on the cover of both Sewing with Nancy's magazine and also Clotilda's magazine, until the sewing machine company started trying to copy me. And, and uh, but Nancy, Clotilda was, she goes, well, I think we should call it the sequins ribbon elastic foot because it also sews elastic really well. In fact, you don't have to pull from behind. And then all of a sudden I get a call. I, don't, I remember it being in a weird time. Like maybe she woke me up and she goes, we didn't have internet. We didn't have texting. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. In fact, when I invented the feet, we didn't have cell phones. Cell phones came out right during the development of the molds for the creative feet. Oh boy, I'm walking down memory lane. I don't have my good cutting shears. I took them off to somewhere. So I have to use my rotary cutter more than I do, generally. Get that out of the way. And let me show you the top before. So you can see how nice and flat that lays and you can't even get your finger below the point. So you don't have to worry about that ever curling up on you. If you've ever sewn rickrack before and you had that happen. So the reason I started talking about Clotilda in this is she, she goes, can you, you gotta try rickrack. And I go, no, it's not gonna sew rickrack. And she goes, just try it. <laughs> she was so pushy. Oh, I love her so much. And then I tried it and I go, oh my, and at that time I did not have the accessory guides. It was just the sequin ribbon with, with just the quarter inch opening. And had I already developed the accessory guides, I probably would never have tried to put it through the smaller guide and saw it do that little zigzag. And I called her up and I go, you are not going to believe what it does. It literally just slithers through the guide. And she goes, that's it. We're calling it the sequin ribbon rickrack elastic foot. <laughs> so it does all that. I used the feather stitch, Wendy, and I did so with the, the widest width my machine will do. And I increased the length. I took it all the way to a 4.0 stitch length. My machine allows me to do that. Some machines won't allow you to change your decorative stitches like that. You bought them at an expo. In Worcester, 
I've only done or attended. I've only attended the Worcester show, I think, twice. Maybe only once. That's where I learned how to say Worcester instead of Worcester. So now I'm sliding my finger across again. And you know what I'm doing because I have been repeating as we go around. And if you're new and have are just coming in right now into the show, this is Fabrically Speaking Live, a show that airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Know that Arizona does not change time. So some parts of the year I'll be one, I'll be two hours of difference and then all of a sudden I'll be three hours difference or one hour difference versus two, depending on where you are on the planet. So that's a little bit of the history of the sequins and ribbon foot. And I invented this for a woman who was a fashion designer. The year the sequins came out on a string. That's how long ago it was. Oh, how time flies. And now I'm going to be 61 next month. And when I designed, when I released my products, my baby girl who is visiting and now 35 years old was in my belly when I released the creative feat to the world 35 years ago. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Here we go again. And I, I do a couple stitches, then I hop back. And that's how I secure the beginning of trim that's flat like this. Get my glasses on. And I'm keeping my eye on the side over here, the side of the slot, trying to line it up with the edge. The foot pressure is set on the lightest setting. I'm going to get a piece of fabric out and show you something. It should have been further over. Oh well. On the other side, I lined it up so that the rickrack was centered. Thread. I try not to use that cutter that much because it cuts the threads too short. So here I didn't center it the right way. Here I had it better. So I got talking too much. I'm going to go ahead and iron again. I hate to waste this. I'll just do a little. Sandra Betsina, yes. <laughs> There's a story about Sandra and I. I don't know if I should say it. I uh, know I have to, don't I? The the day I met Sandra, and I had I had heard her name but hadn't seen her show. I was new to the industry. I cannonballed into the industry with three feet, and it was quite dis disruptive. At that time, there were only like 12 feet for sewing machines. You were lucky if you got seven with your sewing machine. But Sandra came up to me and she goes, she was nice, but she said, I heard you were talking about me. And I go, I'm really sorry, but I don't know who you are. <laughs> and we laughed. I've got stories. Kay Wood, who we lost a couple years back. 
We met because I was laying on the ground with a fever at a show in a lobby and just not knowing how in the world I was going to do the show. And she, I didn't know who she was either. <laughs> And I, she goes, <clears throat> she was a smart aleck. And I open my eyes and I look at her, looking down at me. And she goes, are you okay? And I said, I'm sick. And I was congested. And she goes, you need to always travel with these. And she handed me a Mucinex DM. And I'll tell you what, I never, never traveled without them again. Because within about a half hour, I was back up and setting up my booth. All of these women were different mommies for me on the road. So say you want to sew rickrack around in a design, can you? And while I'm on this, I'm going to show you something else you can do. I'm getting carried away. Claire Schaefer and I, Claire Schaefer wrote an article about the creative feat when I first started. Yes. All right, enough of this. I'm getting all emotional. Uh, Claire Schaefer just had a birthday. She spells her name with an I, and I do not. So I'm using a straight stitch, setting my needle over to the... Yeah, I want it to be close to the edge. So I went the wrong way. Straight stitch, right needle position. Move the guide over. Is that right? I don't think that's right. There we go. This is wrong side up. Sue Houseman. Yes, I was on America Sews with Sue Houseman. She's she's got a personality. I'm not I'm not over enough. Let's. And I was on with Aileen's Creative Living. I have that song playing in my head long, long time ago. This is the day when Claire sang. So you sew on the wrong side and then you flip it over and you, nope, you sew on the right side. I knew I was doing it wrong or I thought I was doing it wrong. I don't do it that often. <sighs> have all of you been around as long as I have? Try that again. Can't do too much more, Claire. You're almost out of this rickrack. Should have ironed it. I'm just going to sew a little bit so you can see. A little bit more over. There we go. Make sure you're on the fabric. Now you go like this. And... You can sew that into seams and quilts. Hem little Barbie's skirts with it. Use the satin edge foot then to stitch it down so you get a perfect top stitch along the edge. Another thing that you can do with the sequins and ribbon foot, as you saw with the circles. Oops, get in there. Cut it too short. Not that I would do this on a butterfly. Using a three-step zigzag, also known as the trico stitch, also known as the serpentine stitch. It's a stitch that goes stitch, 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 stitch. Clotilda invented a product that let you do pleat, so pleats. The pleat, the pleat, the pleat, what is it called? The something pleater. And that's how her business started, was that she came up with this pleater and then she had to sell it. So you can see that I'm following a pattern. Now I'm gonna move the guide over. This is a tight turn, I would never think, I don't think this should work. Okay. Notice that I'm not 
steering the trim. It's getting caught on some things though. So I'm steering the fabric and the foot is in charge. Now I'm going to lower the needle and take it a couple stitches at a time. Lower the needle, a couple stitches, lower the needle. This is not something I would normally do with, with Rick Rack. I've never tried to follow such an intricate design before with it. If it works, I'll be surprised. Oh my goodness. Maybe Clotilda's with us going, try it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I want to get that little point down. All right, I'm going to stop because I think you get the point. And as I said, I wouldn't do this with Rick Rack, even though I'm doing, I am. I would not normally even think it would work. But I will show you. And you normally would only be able to sew it straight so you can swirl it around, as can you with ribbon and also yarns. And that's how you're able to create as I mentioned earlier, how you can write out Merry Christmas in script with ribbon, which I did actually on a project where it got stolen at the Home Shopping Network when I was on there. All of a sudden, our samples were stolen. Very upsetting because one of the things I had was a jacket that one of my customers made I paid $800 for this jacket. She used every technique in the Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook on that jacket. So there were elements all over this wearable art jacket. And I have run on and on. So I think you get the idea. However big you make this is however big your pillow will be if you're making a pillow or however big you are going to make a quilt or you could easily use this instead of continuing to go all the way around. You could easily just continue going on both sides and create a table runner for your table or holiday placemats. These would make really pretty placemats, wouldn't they? <sighs> what do you think, you guys? You like it? I feel like we had a visit from all of those who I loved and cherished in the sewing industry that have passed on, leaving the way for everyone else behind them. And I am 61 now, so there's a lot of new educators and teachers teaching things. And the art of sewing is not dying out. If anything, it's getting bigger. In fact, during COVID, every sewing machine in the United States sold out used and new you couldn't buy a new sewing machine or a sewing machine for a period of months and that's something isn't it go ahead and uh, if you like this video hit the like button if you've yet to subscribe to my channel i sure hope you'll do so today and i'm giggling because last week when i went to end i ended the show but i forgot to stop the stream and then i was taking pictures there were about four, people, four of you in the that were giggling and making fun of me last week. Well, that's not going to happen this time. I'm going to have my mind on what I need to do. That's what I get for changing my buttons around. So I need to go on the next screen and my outro. So I have Twitter, which is now X. I have YouTube, I have the fan group, fan page there, and also the Claire Rowley Creative Feet group. If you're not getting notifications from these things, 
make sure you go into your profile and click on the, the dots at the top or the, th or the three lines at the top and go in there and change your notification settings. You probably are not set to receive any notifications from me. This is something that these companies did. They thought, well, let's just stop giving them the notifications and let you guys figure it out. And I know who you are. I know you guys, you're not sitting there learning the new things. You're not these young whippersnappers that can click and find these magical invisible buttons and ah, the youth, how dare they make it harder for us. So go into every one of your social media platforms. Anytime you are not getting something from someone that you want to follow, check and make sure that you're actually following that person to, to the extent that you want, which generally is under little hidden places in the prof inside of their site. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and know that if you're watching this and the live chat is not on, that you're not seeing it live. This is the end, but it isn't because I haven't asked the question. I almost didn't do the giveaway. Mm. See, I didn't know what the question was going to be before I started either. What have I taught today? And sometimes I give you a two part question. If I do that, I haven't decided yet. You have to answer both of those two parts in one answer. I am on TikTok as well. Yes. So I need to add all these to the website so you guys can find them. But you just type my name in and I pop up all over the place as of LinkedIn and Pinterest and yeah. I've been on the internet since it started. Very first, one of the very first websites on the internet was Creative Feet. Now I also have ClaireRowley.com where you can learn about my artwork and my writing and uh, purchase artwork. I also do voiceover for people. So, and yeah, everything creative. Man, I'm really having a hard time thinking of a question to ask. Are you guys ready to type? Know this, I will be the one that knows who was first. You will not know. You will think you were first, but you may not be first. I will announce the name and type it. <laughs> All I can think of is the last thing I did. So which of the two, three guides should you use? Small, medium, or large on sewing rickrack? Which one? Small, medium, large. This is just this rickrack. This is quarter inch rickrack or it's three eighths of an inch wide. Three eighths of an inch rickrack is actually quarter inch rickrack. Hurry up. All right. JJ got it. No surprise, you've been the most active. Sorry, Brenda, but Brindy, Brenda, Wendy, I think you all have won stuff already. So JJ, I have no idea who you are. You need to go to creativefeet.com, go to the contact page and let me know you won. You can also go into the school as well and let me know there. And we need to get your address and everything and send this to you. You get free shipping on anything else that you'd like to ship. You don't have to maintain the over $69. So if there's anything else on our site that you'd like. And if you are just jumping in right now, know that today is December 14th. Is it? Is it the 14th or the 15th? I can't see. I don't have a date. Yes, it's December 14th, 2023. And this coupon is good right now. And it ends the day after Christmas. Enter stocking all uppercase and you'll receive 15% off. 
your entire order at Creative Feet, there is an exclusion, and that is the bobbins that we have on clearance. The clearance bobbins are lower than 15% or even a bigger discount, and it should not apply to those, but you're already getting a better deal on those. If you like this video, I sure hope that you'll like and share it. These are the important things that help the algorithm know that you guys had a good time today. And if you've yet to uh, join my school, I'd love to get to know you better, and that's the best place to do it. Claire, create with ClaireRowley.com. With that, I will bid you adieu. Merry Christmas. I will see you next week. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> ah, it's not transitioning because I'm on the wrong button. See, I need to, I need to change that. One more time. Take two. I love you. Bye.